This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. This is my beloved Brother 260 machine that I do so many of my videos with and I want to give it some love today. That is a little bit of maintenance. Now you need to do this on a regular basis. Now I'm going to start by removing the carriage from the main bed. It slides right off the end and then I'm going to remove the carriage from the river and it lifts up and comes right off the end. I'll set them aside in a safe place. Now I'm going to take the sponge bar out and my tool for this is a cheap snap apart wooden chopstick. I'll just shove it in the end where the sponge bar goes right here in this channel and push on my sponge bar and then I'll pull it out the other end and have a look at it. The sponge bar is in pretty good shape. It still has plenty of sponge on it to push the needles down and make the machine operate properly. I'll just set it aside. This is a machine knitting cleaning brush. A lot of the dealers have them. Mine's getting a little old and tired, but it still works great. I'm going to slide it in where the sponge bar went and then slide it back and forth. No twisting. I don't want to break any bristles off. Now my bristles are not brittle, so it ought to be fine and just try to clean this channel under here where the knitting needles run and lots of yarn fuzzies get in. I picked up lots of nasty fuzzy stuff. It's not good for my machine to have that in there. Next I'm going to vacuum and try to get more fuzzies out of my machine. I'm going to vacuum along here using a plastic crevice tool. Just the ordinary household vac is fine. I'm going to vacuum along all these slots. Again, trying to get any fuzzies out. I'm going to vacuum along here. I'll vacuum along here and here the most because there's about the most fuzzies there. And then down here in the same kinds of places. Trying to get all the fuzzies off my vacuum that I can. I like to use this instead of just brushing. I don't want to brush the fuzzies down into the knitting machine. Any place that has a hole you're going to vacuum. If you have a punch card mechanism you're going to vacuum there too. Be sure to use a plastic crevice tool. You don't want to scratch your machine. And be sure to be gentle as you rub on your machine. I'm even going to vacuum the underside of my carriages, but gently. I'm going to put my sponge bar back in. It goes spongy side down and it goes on top of the needles. I just start feeding it in. The only oil I use on my machines is Hoppy's Elite Gun Oil. After all, this is Texas. The Elite Gun Oil is safe on plastic, so it's the one you want. I have found it at Academy, Walmart, and of course we've ordered it online before. This machine oil won't gum up your machine over the long run like some of the vegetable-based oils. You can also use the knitting machine oil that came with your machine or a very light sewing machine oil. You can use machine knitting spray lubricant that you purchase from a machine knitting dealer. Do not use silicone spray and do not use products like WD-40. I've got myself a rag, an old beat up sock that I do not feel like darning and it's been washed many times. This is a good rag for this. You can also buy good um, shop rags and use those. I also like to use the microfiber rags that people use for electronics. And I'm just going to get the oil on the rag and I'm going to wipe down the bed of the machine with the oil. This is mostly to clean it. It maybe leaves a little film behind. I'll go all the way across. There's a place on my machine bed where I marked it. I was playing with cables and I'm going to have to use a little damp cloth to get that off. But this is a good thing for just kind of cleaning up the bed. Since it's safe on plastic, you can wipe down the plastic parts too. If you have electronics, don't use any aerosol sprays close to them. Cover the electronics before you use an aerosol spray. Now I'll just do a little bit of oiling. I need to do this tip right here because the machine rubs there and I need to do this rail back here because the machine rubs there and I'm just going to run a tiny bead along the needle butts. This will all be distributed and again I'll wipe a little bit because I don't want too much right on the bed of the machine. 
with my needle pusher, I'm going to bring the needles out and then I'll saturate my rag and just stroke them and get a little bit of oil on them, not too much. With my needle pusher, I brought my needles out and I closed their latches. I put some oil on my rag, see it's a pretty good puddle there, and I'm just going to stroke those needles along the latches and get a little bit of oil on every needle. Gently, of course, I don't want to bend a needle. I'm also going to inspect them and make sure that they look good and straight and that I don't have a bent latch anywhere. Now I'm doing the same thing with my river needles. By now you've vacuumed and you've messed with your needle strips, so double check that the center zero is exactly between the center two needles. And then I like to rub down my needle strip and clean it a little bit with the oil. I don't clean it with anything else. You can see my needle strips wearing out a little bit. These can be replaced. A dealer can sell you one, but I don't replace them till the bitter end. On my carriage, I want to test every button and make sure that it pops in all by itself and pops out. Your buttons can stick. I have learned this the hard way. I've had some luck getting them unstuck with penetrating oil. Especially this one will stick. So you want to just kind of habitually do this. You also want to move your levers and turn your wheel. Now I'm oiling my carriage lightly. These nylon guides need to be oiled because they rub. This is light. The Hoppies has a tiny tip on it. And it also rubs up here. And then the things that move, I tend to put a few dots here and there where there are things that move. Wherever I see a flipper, that's a moving part. So you want to give it a little oil where there's moving parts. It should slide really quietly and effortlessly. Do the same thing to the river carriage. I reinstalled my river carriage and look, this one moves effortlessly. Now you can even test how much good your oiling did by bringing out a few needles and going across. Even though this is a big bulky machine, it's taking very little pressure, one finger, to move it. I'm going to play with all the levers on my river and just make sure that they all move. Now I'm going to cover my machine. Yes, I'm near a window. I like lots of light when I knit. And this is an old twin bed sheet. It's all you need to cover your machine. You could also use a towel or a pretty piece of cloth, or if you want, you could make a fancy cover. You can also remove the sponge bar if you're not going to use the machine for a while. That'll keep the sponge bar from getting flat too quickly. Do not use vinyl to cover your machine because it doesn't breathe and we want to avoid any rust on these machines from humidity. I cleaned all three machines in my knitting room and gave them an oiling. Look how easily my 965i floats on the bed. The standard gauge machines are a little easier to do because the carriages are lighter. It's easier to hold them in your hand. I would much rather knit than clean things up, but doing all three machines took me about an hour plus the time it took me to find all the supplies I needed and lug the little vacuum into the knitting room. So very much worth doing. As I did it, I discovered that one of the machines needs a sponge bar and another machine had a button that was starting to stick, so I got some pushes on that and got that loosened up.